the Airbus 321 Neo. It is becoming a most popular and standard amongst many airlines due to its reliability as well as efficiency. But let's leave aside the airframe itself. Let's take a look at what actually makes this aircraft special. It's the engine, the Neo new engine option. Now there are two versions, which is the Pratt & Whitney version and the CFM version. Today, we're gonna be discussing and taking a deep dive into the CFM Leap 1A. We'll run down various components and give you a little bit of a description and operation of how these things work. It's truly a marvelous engine, packed with power and efficiency. CFM, Saffron, as well as GE have come together to produce this amazing machine. Last I read, I believe each unit costs about 14.5 million. The Leap 1A is a two shaft turbofan, about maximum output of about 35,000 pounds. With its efficient design of 18 carbon fiber reinforced polymer blades with titanium leading edge and titanium trailing edge. With a massive bypass ratio of 11 to one, 80% of its thrust actually comes from the high bypass and those gorgeous fan blades. This is the intake. I are getting to the fan blades. That is the acoustic liner you see. Right below the fan blades is the abradable liner. Very close tolerances. N1 speeds can approach up to 4,600 RPM and the N2 speeds can go up to 20,000 RPM. Fuel efficiency goes up to about 4,400 pounds per hour. This thing sips fuel. Now let's get into the core of this. I had an opportunity to go to the hangar and our mechanics were doing some work. That's a PRSOV valve right there. Pressure regulating shutoff valve. They were changing it out. But it gives us a good opportunity to take a look at the core. So let's go. First thing you see is lots of ducting. Everything has a purpose here. As we look forward towards the front, a quick look at the stator veins right there, right behind the fan blades. And those little holes behind them is the VBV, the variable bleed valves. Forgive me, we're gonna jump around here a little bit, but bear with me. What you're seeing there is the main hydraulic line right there. Right next to it is the starter duct. Up top is the main heat exchanger. Below that is the integrated drive generator oil cooler. And right below that is the FMU, fuel metering unit. Very important. Meters fuel flow to the combustion chamber. It has a sister component later on, you'll see. It's called a split control unit servo valve assembly. Up next is the EDP, engine driven pump for the hydraulics. It's a hydraulic pump. Right below that is the starter. And below that is the IDG, integrated drive generator, providing 115 VAC, 400 Hertz. All of this is attached to the gearbox, ladies and gentlemen, the accessory gearbox, the AGB. Right behind it, you have the TGB, transfer gearbox. This redirects the torque from the inlet gearbox, IGB, to the AGB. And right next to it is the fuel pump. Basically pressurizes the fuel and sends it to the engine. That right there is the starter valve. You guys seen that video on the manual engine start, right? If you haven't, check it out, it's on my page. I turn this to allow air to come down from the starter duct out of the pylon and enter into the starter via starter, goes to the gearbox, and guess what? That's how we start the engine. Another cool little component is this. This is an alternator, ladies and gentlemen. So if there was a massive power loss on the aircraft itself, the engines will keep running because this little dedicated alternator will, guess what? It will power the EECs, the electronic engine control units, the brains of the operation. So even the aircraft doesn't have power, the engine will always run. Up next, we got the PRSO V2, the pressure regulating shutoff valve. After that, you got the HPTACC and the LPTACC. High pressure and low pressure turbine active clearance control valves. It controls these tubes. It sends air through these tubes to make sure the case, the turbine case, is within limits. It basically controls the expansion and contraction of the case, so making sure that the blades within the compartment does not touch the walls. That's as best as I can make it. Right there to the left, you'll see the counterpart to the fuel control unit, big block of aluminum. Okay, onto the cowling itself. You see all this silver? This is shielding, heat shielding. It will protect the engine. It will keep all that heat encased. It's also a protection device. In case there's a fire or an overheat, the shielding will make sure that all that is contained. Towards the aft end, you're gonna see a little tube. That is the center vent tube. Strudes excess gases from the oil system. Now let's take a look at the fuel system. This, what you're seeing is the fuel manifold and what I'm touching right there are the actual fuel nozzles. There are 19 of them. 
with atomizing spray tips to locate it inside the combustion section. Up next, we got the fire loop system. This is the fire detection system. This is the one for the core. It is wrapped around it. It is a fire loop detection. The kind of overheat or a blown duct, these little sensors will pick it up. They have a double redundancy with a channel A and channel B. They're both independent. All in all, there's three of them. One for the fan, which you see right there, and the previous ones for the core and the pylon. All monitored by the computer system of the aircraft, so it's always watching for any kind of overheat detection. If something occurs within the engine and there's an overheat, they will get big indications in the flight deck. Lots of bells and whistles. Uh, at the bottom of the engine, as we see right here, a bunch of pipes, and that is the drain mast. Various components have drain capabilities of their own self. So any kind of leakage within the component, it will drain out the overboard. Taking a look on the other side of the engine, we're gonna take a, again look at the oil tank as well as this little portion right here. This is a very particular pipe. Notice how it's insulated? That's right, insulation is very important. This particular pipe is actually for the nose cowling anti-ice. This takes bleed pressure or bleed air from the core and sends it to the intake. This will heat up the intake lip, making sure that it doesn't ice up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have to apologize. I could not get the other side of the engine open, but I'm gonna show you with schematics. The other side of the engine does have components. Some of the components are the ignition system, such as the igniter box, providing voltage to the igniter. You also have VSV actuators, variable stator vane actuators. These little veins modulate and make sure that the compression within the compressor section is optimal, making sure there's no compressor stall. You also have transient bleed valves. This is to unload the compressor in case there is a stall. But overall, the engine is incredibly magnificent. Forgive me, I cannot go into too much more detail because it's almost impossible. It would take me hours and hours of talking and trust me, I don't think you guys want to listen to me talk that long. But as maintenance, we do have to know all these things and we do have manuals to follow. It's an incredible engine to work on and it's very mechanic friendly. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will get you more soon and I'll leave you with a lovely video of an engine starting up while we were doing a leak check. So thank you very much. Take care. Have a good one.